Acusta and in the next 15 to 20 minutes you will learn about how metal replacement with thermoplastics is done. And we further look which metal components can be replaced in automotive with thermoplastics to reduce CO2 and increase the mileage. Let's have a get started and have a look at the content. I split this training into five parts. We will start with the current challenges in automotive industry, then why aluminium die cast replacement is beneficial. We will have a deep dive on how a metal replacement can look like, including which high performance plastics can be used and followed by some commercial examples and closing with, with the takeaways. So the challenge in automotive, modern cars are gaining in weight and in size and in the past 50 years the weight increase was an average 10 kg per year. Glo globally legislation are pushing original equipment manufacturers short OEMs to design for better fuel economy, lower emissions and improved safety. In parallel, consumers are seeking a better performance of the cars at lower costs. And in all this discussion comes now the central questions: why applying light weighting? Because with a suitable light weighting strategy in place we can contribute to the fulfillment of regulations and consumer wishes, which are safety, customer experience, new energy vehicles and reduction in emissions. On this slide I picked the example of CO2 reduction, for example in the European Union only 95 grams per kilometer are allowed uh, by 2020. The European Union has the strictest of all CO2 values and OEMs have to pay fees for the cars if those are not fulfilled. Currently the new worldwide harmonized light vehicle test procedure short WLTP pushes OEMs even faster to improve the full economy. And we also expect uh, that China is moving fast in such a direction too. I like the statement of Goldman Sachs. We expect a 15% or equal 200 kg drop in average car body weight by 2025 as automaker race to meet CO2 rules. And this is pretty straightforward. The cars need to lose around 200 kg in weight. And one way is to switch to aluminum, which has one third of the weight relative to steel. And secondly, to increase the plastics in body and white structures. So what is the, the current situation with plastics in cars? So currently around 10 to 12 percent of a modern passenger car is made out of plastics. And when we compare different structural materials used in cars, advantages of polymeric materials can immediately be seen. Steel has a density of uh, 7.8 grams per cubic centimeter. Aluminum has one third the density of steel and plastics have half the density of aluminum, leading to a 50% reduction in weight. Now we come to the why. Why aluminum die cast replacement? And we will also talk about the reasons why metal replacements are useful. Uh, on the one hand we can cut down weight by density differences and on the other hand we have a big commercial motivation. Uh, when you look at this chart uh, which represents the aluminum historical price um, we have a 33% increase of raw material price of aluminum in just three years. And when we have a look at copper uh, which is needed for making different alloys, we have a similar picture and this is also a relatively volatile curve compared to aluminum. 
And let's talk about the technical reasons why a switch to plastics for certain applications is beneficial. First point is better economics. So I can consolidate several parts to one and can replace more complex geometries in an easier way. Altogether, I have fewer or no secondary operations, leading to a reduction of machining. Secondly, I can improve my performance by reducing overall part weight, having a better resistance to corrosion or chemical attacks. I can reduce my noise level, which is in electrical vehicles an even more important topic, and I can improve friction and wear of the single parts. And as a third point, I've listed here the appearance argument. I can have integrated colors, transparency and better ergonomic designs. So far we have had a, a quality assessment of why making a metal replacement. Now we make a direct quantitative comparison with a split into process, part and additional advantages. As an aluminum representative I have selected the alloy A380 and compared it to high performance plastics such as polyphthalamides or polyrylamide and polyphenylene sulfide. I highlighted the major differences in orange. Starting with the manufacturing process which for aluminum is a die casting process and it needs high operating temperatures. In comparison with plastics, we can use injection molding for high volume mass production at a high production efficiency. The operating temperatures um, with injection molding are lower. When we look at the part itself with aluminum, we can obtain parts with high dimensional tolerances and the casting is close to net shape. Parts in plastics will lead to, to a around 50% weight reduction and have a 10 to 30% cost reduction. Adding those advantages is the design freedom and linear performance up to 120 to 150 degrees C of semi-aromatic nylons and PPS. And what are the additional advantages for aluminium? It is the the advantage of linear performance up to 200 degrees C. With plastics I can have similar specific strength as aluminum die casting at 120 degrees C together with a better corrosion resistance. Now we come to high performance plastic selection um, for metal replacement. When you think that there are over 60 thermoplastic resins and over 100 additives you can add uh, to your base resin, you end up with thousands of potential compounds. Therefore, you might ask which of those compounds is the optimal material for my replacement. To not lose the head, I laid out here a selection in three steps, which will help to find the right polymeric material. In the first step, we will select the resin morphology, meaning we will decide if we need an amorphous or a semi-crystalline morphology. Then in the second step, we apply thermal, mechanical and cost requirements, followed by the last step, thinking about the manufacturing process, make a final review and fine-tune the selection. So in the step one, uh, select the resin morphology. Amorphous and semi-crystal polymers have the strength in different areas and exemplatory. I show you in the table below the main differences. Amorphous resins have transparency combined with low shrinkage, low warpage and tight tolerances of the part uh, which can be realized. Semi-crystalline resins have an easy processing behavior combined with chemical resistance, mechanical strength and wear resistance. In our case of metal replacement in automotive environments we will have to deal with oils and fuels and also it's under the bonnet with temperature. We will need mechanical strength and probably some wear properties. So semi-crystalline morphology will be the clear choice in our case. 
So here's another um, additional graph. In this graph you can see the direct comparison of amorphous and semi-crystalline resins with their different transition temperatures. Amorphous polymers have with the class transition temperature one major transition temperature up to this temperature properties behave in a linear way. Passing the to class transition temperature the polymer turns into a rubbery state and when you heat it further you will have melt which is necessary for processing a polymer. Semi-crystal polymers have two major transition areas, so this is the red line. Again, the class transition area, where a first drop of properties takes place. However, with semi-crystal polymers, you still have a crystalline network, which is retaining mechanical properties till we reach the second major transition, which is the crystalline melt temperature. At the crystalline melt temperature, the the crystalline structure will be completely melted and processing is possible. So what are the major amorphous and semi-crystalline polymers? This is shown in the table below. On the bottom, which is representing the commodity plastics, are acrylics, PMMA, uh, polystyrene and uh, ABS. We have uh, as next we have the engineering plastics such as amorphous nylons and polycarbonate and on the top uh, in the high performing high performance plastics we have polysulfones, polyethylamides and polyamide emides. On the semi-crystalline side we have the same commodity plastics are for example the polyolefins such as polypropylene, polyethylene followed again by the engineering plastics such as polyesters, acetals and aliphatic nylons and on the high performance end we have the, the polyarylamides, we have the polyphthalamides, we have PPS and we have polyeta -eta ketones named here as representatives. In terms of metal replacement we have already mentioned that semi-crystalline morphology will be beneficial for most metal replacements we need at least a temperature and a mechanical level which starts at an engineering plastic level and upwards. Therefore we can keep aliphatic and aromatic nylons and uh, PPS as a representative in our mind. Step 2. Apply thermal, mechanical and cost requirements. So after selecting the, the base morphology we can apply the, the thermal, mechanical and cost requirements to further narrow down our selection. What you can see on this slide is the, the same table as on the previous slide and I additionally add the thermal and cost parameters. Commodity plastic range below 2.5 euro per kg, engineering between 2.5 and 6.5 euro per kg and high performance. Uh, plastics ranging above the 6.5 euro per kg. This information is also important for our part calculation. As well, the, 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 the class transition areas also increase from the bottom to the top. Let's have a look at the strength to weight ratio. An important criteria is to, to rank the materials in relation to each other uh, using the strength to weight ratio. Um, this is shown uh, in this figure. When we compare our aluminum grade A380 with the engineering and high performance plastic, we can conclude that the, the PPS and also the, the nylon 66 in a similar range and the PARA as well as the PPA with GF 60% are even outperforming the aluminum. This information is helpful for further narrow down our decision process. So far we just looked at our selection at room temperature but how uh, PPA and PARA behave at higher temperatures. Here you can see that para is not a high temperature polymer since it has a TG of 85 degrees C. PPAs, however, have a higher uh, class transition temperature 
which can reach up to uh, 135 to 150 degrees C. Uh, for standard operating environments, both materials are suitable for aluminium die cast replacement. The replacement can result in a around 50% weight reduction and a 10 to 30% cost reduction. So now we can have a take a moment to summarize what we have learned so far. The table on this slide makes a comparison of aluminium diecast material with the with a PE66 GF50 and the PPA GF60. I would like you to keep the emphasis on the green boxes here, uh, where I highlighted the key differentiators. So PP, PPA can be used up to 150 degrees C operating temperature as an excellent chemical resistance towards all the oils, acids and salts appearing in an automotive environment. Cost reduction of PEA and PPA is, is given this already mentioned range of 10 to 30 percent together with a rate, weight reduction of also up to 50 percent. Step 3, review and fine tune. In the last step of the material selection we have to check the processing methods of the selected materials. Most parts are produced in injection molding which comes with several benefits such as low post processing and molded in threads if needed or have te uh, some texturing on the surface. On the right side you can see the processing temperatures which are much lower compared to the metal die casting processing methods. A part of material selection we have to consider some more things in our project management to be successful in metal replacement. And so one point is the definition of the primary aims. Which uh, function does the part need as a whole to fulfill and which function does each single component need to fulfill. Also the product conceptualization. Here it is important to look for design alternative, feasibility studies, potential savings, test programs with prototype parts. and. In the material selection you can think of applying certain additives such as short or long glass fibers or even carbon uh, and steel fibers. And yeah, the designing with plastics is not difficult, it's just different, so this needs to be checked too. If there are, for example, no critical weld line situation, um, then also optimization of the part by using, for example, mold flow studies, combining this with practical fitting studies uh, should be considered too. And finally, evaluation of the material suitability through test specimens and component testing. After this, your part can be ready for a pre-series test and congratulations when you reach this phase. I mentioned it already on the last slide, plastics design is not difficult, it's just different. There are what we call 10 golden design rules which you should uh, follow as good as possible. So those 10 are first, wall thickness as thin as possible. Second, continuous wall thickness to prevent accumulation of, of, of mass. Third, corners and edges with, with a radius. Fourth, ribs designed for molding 40 to 60 percent of wall thickness for ribs. Fifth, avoid plane and even surfaces. Six, use draft angles. Seven, avoid undercut sections. Eight, no more accurate machining as necessary. Nine, check for possibilities of function integration and 10 past performance of design can be a guarantee of future results. So when you think back of your past projects, what went really well, you can still apply them for the future project. Now let's come to the example of metal replacement. 
um, we can close the theoretical part and have a look at different industry examples. Um, yeah, in general, the application range from interior applications such as door locks, instrument panels, armrests, to exterior components and under the hood components, where the highest temperature uh, requirement uh, for metal re replacement applies. I will focus on four application. So this is mainly housing and covers and steering, engine mounts, charge air cooler, and uh, door handle components. Let's start with the first example. The first example is a cover housing for an electronic power steering, short EPS. You can clearly see the weight advantage going from 1.1 kg aluminum die cast to 0.5 kg plastic solution using a polyamide P PA 4T class 5 or 50 percent due to temperature requirements which range from minus 35 degrees C to 120 degrees C and uh, having dimensional accuracy and stability together with chemical resistance in steering application. The next example of an autom is, a, is an automotive cross beam and this example shows how you can use online tools uh, for uh, pre-selection and in this case the so-called CES selector was applied to the given requirements. As a result, a class fiber filled polymer would be around 40% lighter and 20% cheaper and sets path for further investigation. So this is, was now in theory and now uh, you can select it further and start prototyping. Next example is a charge air cooler end cap application um, where the where die casting was replaced by a PA46 with a 50% class fiber load which resulted in an improved engine performance, better fuel efficiency and reduced system costs because it can be mounted directly on the engine. The next example uh, is an engine support mount. So engine brackets are good examples for metal replacement. In this case a PA66 with 60% glass fiber load was selected. It is a high strength type of nylon with a specific strength ranging in the area of steel. And this is a good reason why it is a suitable candidate for replacement. The next uh, example is an under the hood bracket for a car. It is a similar example to the previous one. Um, in this case, excellent heat properties are needed and a nylon 66 with 50% glass fiber load was used. In the final example, a door model was replaced by a, a long glass fiber reinforced polypropylene resulting in an 8 kg weight reduction per door and less fuel consumption. Now we come to the takeaways, to the last part of this training. So we started with the trends in automotive and the motivations for metal replacements, such as weight and CO2 reduction. Uh, aluminium diecast replacement leads to a 50% weight reduction and a cost reduction between 10 to 30%. Thermoplastics have the advantage of function integration and predictive engineering methods can be used for material selection and virtual testing. And we discussed also um, a material selection framework for metal replacement and uh, discussed for industry examples. Yeah, with that I would like to thank you for your attention and for watching this training. Please leave your comments below to share your experience with metal replacement and if you liked it please share and leave a thumbs up. Bye until next time.